Everybody ready? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> okay, this is a, a quick update uh, for you guys, as just to bring you up to speed as um, where we are with um, our property, uh, evidence and property room. Uh, as you know, we've been searching uh, for a new property manager for some time now. Uh, we've had over a hundred applicants uh, apply for the position. Uh, we actually had two different uh, reviews. Uh, we made an initial offer uh, to an individual uh, who turned down the offer, and then we opened the process up again and had a second re review. Uh, these reviews consisted of uh, staff and telephone uh, interviews, as well as visits uh, to Asheville by the, by the finalists. Uh, I am happy to announce that uh, effective March the 4th, 2013, a Mr. Tim P. Scapin uh, will assume the role of property manager for the for the Asheville uh, Police Department. Uh, his salary uh, will be fifty thousand five hundred and two dollars uh, and forty cents. And Dawa has uh, some uh, information as far as his bio uh, and things of that nature that uh, she will share with you. Uh, he's from Pinellas County, Florida, uh, where he worked for the Pinellas County. Uh, sheriff's office uh, for several years. Um, he's uh, an expertise in this area and again when you see the bio it kind of highlights some of his awards and experience um, in this area. As for, as for some other things we just want to bring you up to speed on, uh, we still have uh, one sergeant and four officers assigned to um, our property uh, unit. Uh, once Mr. Scapin is on board he will evaluate our personnel needs and, and see at what level we, uh, we need to, uh, to keep that. Uh, we continue to work with the district attorney's office and the clerk's office uh, to create a balanced system when it comes for destruction of, of items. Uh, we're actually trying to uh, cr create a, a process where we can more efficiently uh, dispose of property in our evidence room. Uh, we're hoping this will free up additional uh, space uh, and deal with some of the, uh, uh, some of the issues that, that, that we've had uh, in our room. Uh, we're also going to be looking down the road at possibly an off-site uh, property space. And what I mean by off-site, we will still maintain our current uh, system here we have at the police department, but basically since we have outgrown our current space, uh, we feel that we're probably going to have to look at some off-site space when it comes to bulky, uh, large type uh, items. Uh, so we'll be we'll be looking at looking at that. I think all of you know uh, that our old property room was released back to us on February 29th, uh, 2012. Uh, we've conducted several inspections, uh, unannounced inspections as well as regular inspections, which are required by our accreditation uh, standards, and we haven't found any issues uh, with our with our audits or inspections. Uh, just to give you some numbers, uh, between August and December, we collected over 5,000 pieces of property and evidence uh, that was placed in our, our evidence room. Uh, during that same period, uh, we returned a little over 1,000 items to uh, the owners uh, of those uh, pieces of property. And we destroyed over uh, 500 uh, items of property. Again, we feel that this will help us in the long run deal with some of the, the space issues uh, uh, that we've been having. Uh, we've installed two new ventilation systems in our, our new uh, property room, and we're currently looking and working with uh, some contractors on a HVAC system for our old property room. Uh, ventilation and some of the other things are some of the issues that we, uh, we identified. Uh, we conducted 12 inspections of both our old and new property rooms in, in 2012. Uh, one included an unannounced inspection uh, by myself. Uh, we didn't find any issues. Uh, we were able to locate all of the pieces of property that, uh, that were part of, of, that, of that audit. Uh, I think as you know, the criminal uh, investigation is, is still ongoing by the State Bureau of investigation, but what I can tell you without jeopardizing any of the facts of the investigation is we know what happened in our property room. Uh, not only do we know what happened, we know how it happened, and we know who was responsible. And we're just waiting for the uh, district attorney's office uh, and the SBI uh, 
to do what they do in, in dealing with this issue. Uh, I'm extremely pleased uh, with the uh, level of work that's been conducted by our folks that's working in the, in the property room. I think they've done an outstanding job. Uh, our new property room is much well, uh, better organized uh, uh, than our old property was uh, in the past, and I think the men and women who are working in there are doing a, doing a fine job. So I am very personally very satisfied with the progress uh, that we're making. I'm looking forward to getting our new property manager uh, on board, and one of the challenges that he will face will be evaluating uh, how we do business when it comes to evidence and property, uh, coming up with a system uh, that we can do an even better job when it comes to disposal, disposing of property, uh, which will definitely help us with the space issue. So I'll be more than happy to try to answer any questions you guys might have. Chief, you said you, um, you've come to learn what happened in the old room. Uh, what happened in the old room? I can't go into that because of the investigation. All right, and you mentioned the SBI investigation is ongoing. Is there also any federal investigation ongoing? I can't uh, discuss that. Could you tell us how important Mr. Scapin's role is and, and exactly um, you know, how critical property managers are in the course of a criminal justice? Well, it's, it's very important because um, um, they're the ones who manage uh, the evidence that comes into uh, a police department helps prepare it uh, for court cases uh, when you're when the DA is seeking a prosecution. Uh, so as far as the management of that process, it's one of the most sensitive uh, areas uh, with any law enforcement agency. So having somebody come in with his level of experience uh, in this area, I think is going to take us to where we need to be uh, in this particular operation. Uh, after the audit, there were some other personnel needs that were that were cited as to make sure that the new evidence room would function well. Um, I believe eight to twelve people was the recommendation. Uh, any idea what kind of progress is being made in that? Well, first of all, that's just a recommendation. Uh, right. I've worked in agencies this size before, and I've never seen eight to twelve people uh, working in a in a property room. Uh, I think the fact that we have uh, a sergeant and, and four officers working. And the fact that we're bringing in a, an experienced manager, one of his responsibilities will be to evaluate our personnel needs and make recommendations to my offices as, as to where we, we go with that. I think eight to, eight to 12 people in our agency, agency outside is a little excessive. Could you give us some more background, just a quick summary of how you guys recognized there was a problem, what led to the changes? I think the investigation. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I mean, happened. well, what, um, I mean, was, did that initiate from outside then, you know, from the district attorney's office, or, or like, what, what were some of the early signs that perhaps something, you know, needed to be Well, I think how things evolved, and you guys probably have more history about that than, than I do, but I think how things evolved um, uh, caused us to take a, a closer look at our operations uh, and to quickly identify some needs uh, that needed to take place in our in our property room. So, uh, I think the initial investigation, when everything came to a to a head, it forced us to to really look at how we do business when it comes to uh, property and evidence. And I think that's uh, that's uh, uh, got us to where we are today. As as you know, the city commissioned a, a fairly full audit of the old evidence room, and um, we all heard a briefing to council last summer. I'm wondering if, if you've yet to see uh, the contents or a portion of that audit by Blue Line. No, I have not. Um, at the same meeting, um, you said that you needed to see that audit to chart a path forward and its recommendations, and subsequently city council requested from the DA that he share the recommendations from that audit. Have those been shared? No. And do you have any sense of why? Is there any discussion regarding that? I think that's a question for the district attorney. And um, I know much of this predates your time here, but I was wondering if you could speak to how much it's consumed your time since you've been here. How much of a problem or issue or uh, struggle has this been? It's, it's, been a, it's been an issue in the police department, but I would not say it's consumed uh, uh, a lot of my time. Um, I have a captain, uh, we have a captain, we have a lieutenant, 
who oversees this process. We understand how important it is. We put a lot of emphasis on monitoring that and making sure that everything is done not only by policy but also by uh, our accreditation uh, standards. So we really worked hard to um, to uh, just make sure we're doing what we need to what we need to do. And what sort of outside um, sources or expertise are you trying to draw on in in managing your rooms? Well, and that's what Mr. Scapin will bring, his, his experience, uh, the fact that he's uh, certified through the International Property Managers Association. Um, it's my understanding that his background has been in really in the area of disposal and working with, in Florida, it's called the State Attorney's Office, and, and dealing with these, these issues. But uh, uh, just this level of experience and expertise. Um, you may be aware, for a couple of years, there's been a relatively new statewide association of property managers. Um, are you familiar with their work? Do you plan any involvement uh, with that professional association? We have been um, involved with them in the past. I would expect that Mr. Scapin will, will become a member. He's a member of the International Property Managers Association, so I'm sure he'll be a, a member of the, uh, the state agency as well. Thank you. And um, let's see. I'll come back with you. I had one more question for you, but let me formulate it. Any other questions? Chief, what's the best way to describe what kind of shape you think the evidence room's in today? It's really not in that bad of a shape. I, I think on appearance-wise, uh, when you look at uh, some of the photos and, and things that, that um, Blue Line brought to light, uh, I think overall the best way to describe it is uh, organized chaos when, you, when, you're, when you're looking at it. But our folks, uh, they know where the items are. They've proven that through the, through the audits. But when you have such a volume of stuff that's in a relatively small area, it's going to look and appear to be e extremely crowded. But I think the key to all of this is understanding the process, understanding the policy, and more importantly, being able to put our hands on a piece of evidence of property when we need to, knowing where that, where, that, uh, where that item is. And that's what our audits and that's what our inspections accomplish. A lot of us saw photographs of the evidence room um, that were taken, I'm not sure how long ago, several months ago at least, when um, there was a presentation made to City Council last July, I think. And it looked pretty disorganized then. Uh, does it look the same now? Our old evidence room in some areas, uh, I would say say yes. Our new evidence uh, room is much more uh, better organized and, and, and uh, uh, professional looking. But even with the, the old evidence room and in some cases how bad uh, some of the items looked, again, the most important thing is being able to put our hands on a piece of evidence when we need to and having a system in place, a tracking system in place. Uh, but we're basically dealing with a space issue. And that's, that's definitely something that uh, we're going to, going to have to address in the future. Do you have photos of that to share? Are we allowed to get video from outside the area? What, what access to video do we have with the participants? Zero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have some, uh, photos? some photos that we can probably share with you. Thank you. And, and this upcoming year, are, are you going to, do you feel there's going to be additional funding required to, uh, to improve the evidence room and keep it up to standard? I won't know that until we really get our property manager on board um, and uh, look at it. I think the biggest issue when it comes to funding that we may have to address down the road is the off-site uh, location. But I think if we do a good job of purging a lot of the stuff that we have in our current room, it will free up space uh, for new items that, that are coming in. But again, this will all be part of the overall evaluation that we work with our new property manager on. Now that you all know a little more about what happened, when did the troubles with the evidence room begin, near as, near as the department can tell? I can't really get into dates, times, and, and things of, 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 of what occurred. What's important for me is that I know what happened. I know how it happened, and that we have taken steps to correct that to ensure that it doesn't happen again. That's the most important thing that, that uh, I'm focused on. And where have you learned uh, the substance of what occurred? Basically from being briefed on the investigation. I see. And um, Mr. Scapin, will he be a sworn officer or not? And what's the difference and what are the pros and cons of either approach? Uh, he, he will be a civilian. Um, I have never worked in an agency before where we had sworn officers. 
uh, in our property evidence room. Normally it is uh, staffed by civilians and I see that, that same thing continuing here. The only difference is until he comes on board and we can evaluate our full operation, we're going to keep the sworn officers in there that we have now. Thank you. What can you tell us about his background? Uh, it's in the bio okay. uh, that we'll get to you. Okay. And I'm trying to remember, you, you, you talked about this early on, and maybe I didn't catch some of the details. How many folks did you end up having contact with? How many candidates did you have? Uh, about 100. I think we had a, a little over 100 that applied for the, for the position. And if I remember correctly, um, you went through one round of applications, felt like you didn't get what you, the, the experience or the expertise that you were looking for, so you went back out? Is no, that, that really wasn't the case. Okay. We did find a, a person that we felt was very qualified and, and, and uh, very fit uh, for, the, for the, uh, the job, but I think they had some reservations. They were from out of state, and I think they had some reservations about moving is what it really came, came down to. Um, uh, we were disappointed because we do feel this, this person was a, a good candidate. But with the second process, I think we got someone who's equally qualified and, and we're very happy with. So So you made an offer and they turned you down? Is that That's essentially correct. what happened? And um, this salary is a good bit more than you originally contemplated. Why is that? Well, I don't think it's more than we originally con contemplated. I think if you look at the salary range, the, the entry level salary might have been more uh, I might have been less than, than what this, this salary is, but we think this salary is very competitive. Uh, naturally, we discussed this with the candidate and uh, came to an agreement. So I think the salary is very competitive. Mm -hmm. Forgive me if everybody knows the answers to this already, but um, could you tell me, when did the former property manager leave? And, uh, we can send you that public personnel information. If you want to leave your card with me, I'd be happy to send okay, that Okay, thank you. Chief, when um, this issue came up last year, um, various people made various estimates of how long it will take to get the evidence room in a condition that you want it to be in. Um, any ideas now, that, you know, since the time has passed, you guys have looked at it more closely? Well, to get it to the perfect point of, of where I would like it, and that's organization and, and the beauty of it and, and all of that, uh, that probably will take two to three years. And quite frankly, the reason for that is because we are going to have to touch every piece of evidence that is in, um, our, in our possession. Uh, I think you all know that we have these storage units that are uh, in back of our police department and as well as some other locations. We want those gone. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, it's going to take touching every piece of, of evidence and property. But it's also going to require that we put a strong emphasis on disposal and working with the court system and the district attorney's office to deal with that, that to deal with items that, that has already been adjudicated in court. So it's going to be a huge, a huge process. But the other thing I'd, I'd like to point out too, this is not unusual for a police department. Hmm. Uh, many police departments reach a point uh, in their, their lives that they outgrow space and evidence and property is one of those spaces. So outside of the criminal aspect that, that what, what's occurred here, the space issue is something that all police departments uh, usually have to address at some point or another. Do you, go ahead. You can go ahead. Do you know at this point how much space off-site uh, you might be looking for? Not yet and, and we really won't know that until we really get into the disposal part see how much space we can free up here at APD, and then if we do determine that that's exactly what we need to do, then uh, we'll go down that road. A semi-related issue is uh, you're probably aware there's a new push uh, to get a new SBI lab in Western North Carolina that would have more toxicology, that would have toxicology and DNA capabilities that aren't presently in the western part of the state. Um, if that comes to fruition, there's a serious bill in the legislature about it. How would that um, how would you see that impacting uh, the, the distribution of those items of evidence and the, the kind of the wheels of justice as they turn here? We really haven't looked at that mainly because I think uh, a lot of what's being discussed now deals with blood evidence and, and DWI cases and things like that. But anything 
that can help us from having to make a trip to Raleigh or send things to Raleigh. If we could have something in our back, backyard that we can deal with it, obviously that's gonna, gonna be a big help to us. I know you have thousands of things in there, but could you tell us in general, what do these things, what pieces, what do the pieces of evidence range from? Like what's the lo smallest thing to the largest thing? In there? It could be anything. <laughs> it could be anything, anything and, and everything. Uh, you name it, it's probably in there. So uh, at some at some point or another, um, everything. All right, folks. Chief, unless you feel differently, maybe have time for one or two more questions. Chief, you you said a minute ago I, you phrased it a little differently, but essentially, uh, you've been briefed on the investigation. You feel like you you've been told enough to know who did what and sort of how this how things got to this point. Um, that implies to me that the SBI is basically done. Is that your understanding? No, that's, okay. I've just been briefed at, on the, during the course of the investigation. I don't know what the status, uh, whether it's closed, close to being closed okay. or anything like that. I, I really don't know that, but they've kept me uh, informed uh, as to the level of the investigation. Well guys, we appreciate it. Uh, you guys all know Dawa, so if you have any uh, other questions or things that might come up later, uh, please contact her and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Thank you all for being here.